welcome to this beautiful morning and to our service of Sunday worship on this, the second Sunday after Trinity. The more observant amongst you might have noticed that the name of the service has changed from common worship to Sunday worship. The first service, the first Sunday service will be known as a family service, the second, Sunday worship, the third, informal worship, and the fourth, communion. I hope that will become easier to understand as we progress through the, the weeks. Let's bow our heads for an opening prayer. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Now hear the word of God as written in Psalm 20, our psalm for today. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall. But we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. So now please stand if you are able and lift up your hearts, if not your voices, in sung worship. Streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. And blessed be your name, when the sun shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. There's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, i turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. you 
pour out our tongue back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. I will sing this song of gladness. I'll give my praise to the fountain of delight. For in my helplessness, you heard my cry. And waves of mercy pour out on my life. Oh, I will trust in the cross of my Redeemer, and I will sing of the blood that never fails, of sins forgiven, of conscience cleansed, of death defeated and life without end, oh beautiful Savior, wonderful counselor, clothed in majesty, Lord of history, you're the way, the truth, the life, star of the morning, glorious in holiness. You're the risen one, heaven's champion, and you reign, you reign over all. Oh, I long to be where the praise is never ending, and I yearn to dwell where the glory never fades with countless worshippers and Christ on song and cries of worthy will honor the Lamb beautiful Savior wonderful counselor Love to majesty, Lord of history, you're the way, the truth, the life, star of the morning, glorious in holiness, you're the risen one, heaven's champion, and you reign, you reign over all. Please be seated as we come to our time of confession. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. As we say together, Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others, 
and the good I have left undone. O God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you, and raise me to newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we now affirm our faith together through the words on the screen. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now proclaim that faith through sun worship as we greet the Word of God. In the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to fall on our Savior, to fall on our grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves, there is hope in your name. Our first reading this morning comes from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 6 to 10 and 14 to 17. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So, whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, 
therefore all have died. And he died for all those that who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. And Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, and he knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, and then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And Jesus said, what can we, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples. He explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thinking of this for a while, and the readings today confirmed it, as also did Steve's testimony last week. So let's just invite Steve up so he can give us a reminder of what he shared with us last week. Touch this up here. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, let me put a bit of context around um, what I spoke about last week for you, because some of you heard it, some of you didn't, so I'll tell the whole story again. But I'll put a bit of context around it. I became a Christian in 1973. I was quite young at the time. And um, I, I think I'd been running away from God up until that point, but suddenly God confronted me with my future. And uh, I had to just get down on my knees and say, Lord, I want you in my life. And then several things happened. Firstly, there was no flash of light or, you know, any angels singing or anything like that. But what did happen was I got a sense of deep peace within me that gradually grew and grew. And um, the story goes that a few months later, my mother sent me over to her friend, a friend of hers with a box of eggs. It was a box of six eggs. And I don't know what they were doing, baking or something. But I was on my bicycle riding across. I had my hand on the, the handlebars here with the front brake and the eggs in my hand. And I rode along, took a corner, and a gust of wind blew me, <clears throat> and I put the brakes on, and the bike stopped, but I didn't. I went up in the air, so did the box of eggs. I came down on my shoulder, fractured my shoulder, concussed myself. The eggs came down, and they were completely whole. And uh, there's a metaphor there, isn't there? You know, and later on, I'm thinking about this now, and God's saying to me, you can actually put all your eggs in one basket because I'm the basket, and I will protect you and I will give you peace, and I will build your faith for you. But the, the result of that was that I was, in, uh, I was in, incapacitated for two weeks. I spent a, a night in hospital and, and for observation for concussion, and then they sent me home all trussed up with my fractured shoulder, and I was in a lot of pain. But during those two weeks, I read the Bible right the way through from cover to cover, and God built my faith. He filled me with his spirit, and then he sent me out into the streets, and I was out on the streets evangelizing probably every Saturday and, and most Sundays and sometimes in the evenings as well, going out, giving out gospel tracts and, and reading the Bible with people and leading people to Christ on the streets. And he just fired me up completely. I had such a peace and joy inside of me at the time. And I was walking along and um, giving the gospel. And I saw this old man on a bench, park bench, um, near the marketplace in Hereford at the time it was. <clears throat> and... I thought, after a while, I thought, I'm going to have to go and speak to him because he keeps looking at me. 
he's been there for an hour now and uh, watching me and, and, and not said a word to me. So I went across and I, um, I spoke to him and I started to share my faith with him. And he looked at me and said, what is it that makes you know that you're a Christian? I said, well, that's easy. I feel so happy inside. I feel peace. I feel joy. It's just bubbling over inside me. He said, what happens when that goes? What happens when it's not there anymore? I said, well, it'll always be there. And he said, no, it won't. He said, take it from me. I'm an old man and I've lived a life and your feelings will come and go. He said, let me give you a word of advice, Sonny. <laughs> he said, never rely on your feelings because your feelings will change. Always rely on the word of God because the word of God never changes. And in the word of God, it says that you are a child of God. God has no grandchildren. You can't be a Christian because your parents were. You can only be a Christian because you have asked Christ into your heart. And that's exactly what happened to me, I guess. He built my faith from that. And I've always believed from then on that it's the word of God that you have to get not just into you, but through you. And that's what really builds your faith. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> so faith, how to grow it, how to keep it, and how to manage in the dry times where those wonderful bubbly feelings of joy, peace, and all the rest of it aren't there. Well, we all have faith in something. I remember my mind being blown at school in my early teens. We were in a physics lesson we were being taught about atoms and stuff. Those of you who are remotely scientific would have realised with those two words, and stuff, that physics was not a passion of mine. But our teacher said that it was theoretically possible for all the atoms in the science lab bench to all move to one end and the bench would collapse. And the same is true of the pews and chairs you're sitting on today. But we all have faith in the laws of nature the laws that God created, that this won't happen. I was listening to Professor Brian Cox talking about the universe, and he was so excited about the discoveries about how it had all been created. He waffled on about black holes and, and colliding atoms and gases. But at the end, he said, we still don't know what triggered the initial event. I have to confess to shouting at the TV, much to Poppy's amazement, have you thought about God? Faith is mentioned over 261 times in the Bible. I think the classic quote is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen. I like the message version. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith is firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. I'm just going to read that again. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. So how do we grow this faith? One of the most important things is to read God's Word, the manual for life, the Bible. Did you know that there are over 3,000 promises in the Bible, and he hasn't failed to keep one of them yet. And you know what? He never will. Just some of them haven't come to pass. And we all know that God's timing is perfect. <clears throat> Taking every opportunity to learn more of God, more of the amazing things he has done. Coming here, listening to the word as it's preached signing up for any teaching courses that are offered in the cluster, maybe joining a house group or a prayer group. And I personally find going to events like Spring Harvest and attending various seminars there really help to increase my faith. However, it is important that we don't view faith like a spiritual gas tank, depending on special events to top us up and then rely, like Steve just shared in his testimony just now, on the wonderful buzz and the good feelings we get from those events. Although these are great, we should view them as the icing on the cake. We're hoping to run an alpha course sometime in the future, when COVID permits such things. And although it is initially for people exploring faith for the first time, I know when I went along with Pete, my husband, I'd been a Christian for over 20 years. 
that the Alpha Course really renewed that firm foundation with the indisputable facts about Jesus' existence and life that were documented not just by the disciples, but by many historians of the time. They were facts. So I'd encourage all of you to come along if you can. Just watch this space. In our reading this morning from Mark, we hear of the kingdom of heaven being likened to a field on which the farmer sowed his seed. He did nothing but sleep and wake, but the seed grew. Jesus is telling us that just as nature's growth is inevitable, so is the growth of the kingdom of God. The trouble is, we are creatures of the moment, whereas God has all eternity to work. But I think most of us here will agree that the kingdom of God is closer now than it has ever been. Have faith, my friends. The second part of our gospel reading talks of a mustard seed, and I believe this is telling us not to be daunted by small beginnings. Remember the other time when Jesus speaks about a mustard seed? Faith, just that small, can do amazing things. So to grow your faith, learn all you can about God. Meet together and gossip God. Share with one another and encourage each other always. Keeping our faith is really more of the same. Share, learn, and gossip God. But I also really recommend keeping a faith journal and recording all those answers to prayer you've received, all those God incidences, which just cannot be put down to anything other than divine intervention. I shall never forget having to take my cousin to Southmead Hospital. I don't know if any of you have been there, but the parking is awful. There is a brilliant multi-story, but it's a long way from the door, and you have to climb up quite a steep slope to get to the hospital itself. There are just about half a dozen disabled spaces by the door, and as you can imagine, those spaces are like hen's teeth, because most people going to a hospital usually have some form of disability. My cousin had had a large tumour removed from her thigh just 14 days previously, and was on crutches and still in quite a bit of pain. And the asthma at the time was not good. We were going to go to get the results of the test to see if the tumour was malignant or not. So anxiety levels were quite high. I knew there was no way either of us would be able to make it up the hill from the multi-storey. And the appointment was half past two, peak visiting time, the worst time ever for parking. As you can imagine, there was quite a bit of prayer going on. Well, we drove up to the front door, and not only was there one space, there were two either side of the door. Unheard of. Thank you, God. I will also add another even bigger thank you that the tumour was benign. But we heard last Sunday of other examples of God's faithfulness to us. Make a note of them when they happen to you. Learning God's promises and maybe storing a couple up in your heart and really holding on to them. One of my favourite promises is in John chapter 16, verse 33. In this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And of course we have those wonderful verses in Jeremiah chapter 29. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Then we come to how we keep faith in the times of trouble. Because rest assured, as Steve shared, just because we're Christians, it doesn't mean life will all be plain sailing. We only need to look at Job to understand that. But we can also look at Job as a lesson in how to come through. He held firm to God's promises. His faith was on a firm foundation. Joe has talked about being in a time of flux just now. Change makes us uncertain and indeed sometimes uncomfortable. But if we have our feet firmly planted on the rock that is Jesus Christ and have God's promises sealed upon our hearts, we will all come through. Remind ourselves of all that God has done for us in the past and will do again. And it is in the dry times that we need the fellowship and the love of our fellow Christians. So to sum up, learn as much about God as we can, reading his word and talking about it with our fellow Christians. Store up his word in our hearts 
especially his promises, give ourselves a firm foundation, record his miracles in our lives, and reach out to others in the dry times. As our reading from Corinthians says, we walk by faith, not by sight. I will just conclude with the verse from Hebrews 11 again. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust or faith in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gift of faith. And we thank you that you do always come through. Lord, give us peace in our hearts right now and help us to plant our feet firmly on solid rock and grip hold tightly of your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lenny. You know, please stand, strengthened and invigorated by Lenny's talk for our next worship song, Our Father Everlasting. Father everlasting, the all-created one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe in. God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Yes, I believe in you. Yes, I believe you rose again. And I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, I believe. I believe you rose again. Yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, 
then we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in life eternal, I believe in the virgin birth, I believe in the saints' communion, and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection, when Jesus comes again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. As we now come, <coughs> excuse me, as we now come to our time of intercessory prayer. King of kings, Lord of lords, thank you that you are great and abundant in power. Your understanding is beyond measure. In your wisdom, you have created the church, described as Christ's body. May we work together as members of one body, using the gifts and abilities you have given us to faithfully love and serve one another. Would we find our strength from Jesus, the head of the body? May the Lord make us increase and abound in love for each other. May you establish our hearts as blameless in holiness before you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the light of the world, guiding our steps on your path. Your word says that you are a good father who gives us good gifts. Thank you for the gift of this church, a community of your children that you have gathered together to worship, serve, pray and love. Give us strength to live as ambassadors for you in the world. Lord, bless this church and keep us pure. Make your face shine upon us. And we especially ask you to shine upon our cluster church wardens who were commissioned this Wednesday. Turn your face towards us and give us peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for all those who help our community to run smoothly because of their jobs, voluntary work, or neighbourliness. Help us to be supportive and encouraging and to step into situations where we can serve. Bless our neighbours and strengthen those who are working in your name in order to bring healing and comfort to those in need. We especially think of the food bank and the volunteers who serve the needs of our community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, give us the grace to hear your voice and the strength to continue working for your kingdom in this time of pandemic. Be with our government as they assess the situation with regard to removal of restrictions. Help them to make the difficult distinction between the economy and public health. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, do not allow us to be indifferent to those who today suffer the loss of a loved one or who suffer from the absence of work, but give us the courage to accompany and side with those who suffer violence or injustice here or throughout the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, we pray for your world. We bring before you our concerns about situations in places such as India and Hong Kong, plus other places which may not currently be in the news headlines, but are no less important. We pray for world leaders, that they may be inspired less by parochial matters than wider ones. We pray too for our own country, the Prime Minister and Cabinet members, some of whom carry a heavy responsibility for taking the country forward at this difficult time. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. We remember too the places in which we live, work and see our families and friends. Even now in this period when it's harder to interact socially face to face, 
We ask your blessings on our efforts to care for those in need. May we prayerfully support those public bodies who are leading the provision of health in our own localities, such as emergency services, our doctors, nurses, and our local authorities. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We remember in our prayers those who are in poor physical or mental health and give thanks to those who look after them. We remember those suffering in other ways, especially those who mourn the deaths of family members and friends. Be with them, Lord, and bring them your comfort and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of your spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now pray the collet together. As we pray together, faithful creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You know, please stand as we bring our service to a close with our final song, one of my favourites, Thine Be the Glory.
very difficult not to sing out loud to that, isn't it? Uh, somebody didn't. <laughs> but brilliant. Please remain standing for the blessing. Taken from Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Let us now speak the words of the grace to each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.